Hey brothers and sisters, I started to do a video and the blowers came out and now there is a swim meet starting so I'm going to try again. We'll see how it goes. I wanted to say hello to everybody. Um, I am not at all sad. I can't, I can't believe these people think that we would be sad. We're one day closer to the rapture. I don't know what the day is, but I was very I'm always encouraged by the Lord. You know, the Holy Spirit is our comforter our joy, our strength, our guide, our teacher. And I'm like a little kid. I'm like, God, just show me something else. So on the morning of, of um, June 9th, which, you know, a lot of people thought was Pentecost. It could have been that it was the morning of June 10th. Calendars are crazy. Anyway, um, I heard the Lord call me by name. He's only done that twice before. It's an internal voice, but it is a voice, and he said, Terry. Very, he said, Terry. Very calm, steady, comforter, shepherd kind of voice. I was like, I was like, yes, Lord. Yes, you call me by name. Okay. I said, my sir, uh, I said, um, yes, Lord, your servant is listening. I try to teach people to do that. When you hear God, ask him, just like Eli did. And so I said, yes, Lord, your servant is listening. And he waited and he waited. And then very, just matter of fact, no emotion, nothing but just steady is all I can think of. Just like steady. He said, bride, I shall come. And I was like, yes, Lord, like come soon. There was no urgency to it. It was just steady, like completely assuring so I'm on the eight-day plan <laughs> sounds like a diet doesn't it I'm on the eight-day plan and it really works well just to look eight days at a time um, I do have to say for some weird reason 622 keeps coming up um, oh I didn't bring my phone out here uh, I was I was looking at I was looking at a scripture about the the woman who had the coin the silver coin Oh, I can't remember what the number was for the silver coin, but it turned out that when I just accident, I just tapped on it, it came up at 622, which it does mean utterly destroy. And then when I went to the hospital today, five different levels of parking, you know, it's in Atlanta, there's a lot of parking. When I got out of the car, the car across from me, the tag was 6222. So, I don't know. He could come. He could come at any moment. Could he come on on June twenty second? I love my twenty two, so he could come then. Um, so here, I wanted to get on and tell you, I well to ask you actually to pray for people. Pray for people. Um, I had after he had told me about that. I had I was singing the song, um, "No More Night, No More Tears." Ever trying again, praises to the great I am. I will live in the light of the risen Lamb. It's from David Phelps. It's just an absolutely beautiful song. And I sang it for like three or four days. But, but he had told me that. And then when I started singing that song, I got up and it, I walked downstairs. I didn't have my, have my phone with me and it was 444. Go If you go to prophecynews.com, I don't watch the prophecies, but if you would just look and see what is the meaning of 444, you will be blown away. Blown away. And if you scroll down, there is a video about a man who discovered the tuning of the 444. It's just, it will encourage you. Now, you know, I put out a lot of videos and it, I feel like a mother in a lot of ways for my, you know, I'm supposed to be feeding the sheep. And I put out a lot of videos. But, you know, you have to have your own time reading the Bible. I can't do it for you. I wish I could. I wish I could just go boom, boom, boom. Everybody's got their own oil, right? That's what I wish I could do. Just like boom, boom, oil, 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 light, 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 salt, salt, salt. It doesn't happen that way. It's kind of funny when you think about that there is a swim meet going on. Uh, now, these are kids, right? But, but same principle. You know, 
when we are doing something, whether, you know, I used to play tennis or whether your kids are taking piano lessons or whatever, you have to do the work. You have to do the practice. The practice, which is just the same as the Christian life. You can't be lazy about it. You have to be disciplined. You have to get up, do your Bible study. You have to be quiet and listen to God speak to you. The still small voice is very, very, very important. So um, on Sunday, you know, when the rapture didn't happen, God is very good to me because I, my primary gift is evangelism. Know what your own primary gift is. And when you use it, you will be filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. So mine is evangelism. But I wasn't going to think I was going to go out and share the gospel. But it turned out that um, I we'd had a really heavy rain. So I needed to go get some salt for my pool. I have a salt water pool. Praise the Lord. What a gift I've been given. Um, but when I walked into the store, uh, her name is uh, Deborah. Um, I hadn't seen her in about a year. She had left the store. She had come back. And to me, this is the whole point of this channel, is to tell you about other believers who are out there and to give God the glory in the stories about these people. So I saw her, and she said, This is really strange. I was just talking about you uh, on Friday. So this was on Sunday. I was just talking about you on Friday. And I said, Really? She said, Yeah, I was talking um, to you know family members about how you have stayed uh, your divorce, but you've stayed single. She said, could you tell me the verses? Can you believe that? She wanted me to tell her the verses. Well, of course, I've got them. I was like, yes, Mark 10, Luke 16, Romans 7, 1 through 3, uh, 1 Corinthians 7, uh, 10, 11, and 39. You know, so she's like, writing. I'm writing them down. We had a wonderful conversation. Now, the strange thing was, she was in the same church that I was in when that church brought me in for church discipline even though I was not in sin. You know what? There are some messed up churches. There's some messed up believers. There's some messed up churches. There are a lot of, they don't even know that they're fake Christians, but they can't understand. They'll read the Bible, but they can't understand it. First Corinthians five is very, very important. That is the, that has been the downfall of the church because they will not, they will not do what they're supposed to do. The pastors won't do it. Everybody, it, you know, it's a good old boys club. I hate to say it, but it is. It's a good old boys club, and they protect each other. Uh, in fact, there was a guy who came on to one of my old videos, and he started asking me questions, and he's like, wow, you know, of course people hate you because men don't want to hear the truth from a woman. They don't. They don't. It, You know, uh, as many times as I, I have tried to teach men, evangelize men, I've got a hummingbird. I just saw that. Thank you, God. Um, I don't know what it is about men, but they need it from another man. But there aren't that many godly men around doing the work. And there are a lot of godly women who are surrendered to the Lord, who are raising their families, who are loving their husbands, who are taking care of their elderly um, family, nurses. Just It's just... You know, I feel sorry for men. I really do. Even though I think I raised a very good son. Um, and I know a lot of you mothers have raised very good sons. Because we, we that's what we want to do, right? We're, we are nurturers. We, we love. We're not as unconditionally loving as a dog. But we are, we are loving. We are loyal. Uh, we don't want to verbally abuse our children. We want to grow them up and build them up. Not give them false praise. Be disciplined with them. And also love them. In fact, um, you know, the Lord had told me uh, for my son, he said, uh, he said, show him love, forgiveness, and discipline. And I, I am proud of the mother that I've been. That doesn't make me boasting. That doesn't make me anything other than I, I am proud that what God did in my life, even before I was born again. Now, I did raise him up as a high schooler because I got saved at 40. I was 45 years old and he was 12. 
So, but I am proud that I have not brought dishonor to the family name, which I'm not giving, but I haven't brought dishonor. I brought honor. I brought honor to the Lord God Almighty and brought honor to my family. Um, whether they receive it or not, it really isn't up to me. It is up to God. God's will be done. So, um, so I had a wonderful conversation with Deborah, and she was going to pass um, the channel on. Y'all, I don't even know. I think I know I've got over a hundred. I might have over a hundred and twenty different videos about divorce and remarriage adultery, and that's the thing. I know y'all think I'm a broken record and, you know, I've been accused of having this bitterness and having a bee in my bonnet about this issue. But guess what? This, as this book says, let me show you this book, The Trojan Horse Within the Church. This book, I just started reading it again. If you, if you don't have time to read a book, if you go to the playlist um, in the Divorce and Remarriage, the ones that are by um, CPR Ministries, I believe, are David Webb, excuse me, Joseph Webb, who is the author of this book, okay? And the amazing thing is, he goes back, he goes back to um, the early, early church people, back in the 200s, back in the 300s, and um, they had moral, I, I mean, just I underlined, different things but um you know do we raise our sons and daughters to get married and then to get divorced and remarried and to have children from di that's not that's not what godly parents do that's not what godly parents do we we train up i mean i remember you know eight years old talking to my kids high school we talked to our kids those who don't talk to their kids about it end up with messed up kids. We have to be courageous parents, you know, as the movie Courageous talks about. We were made to be courageous. Seek justice, love mercy, walk humbly with our God. Um, if anyone commits this work, uh, I charge you, he said, to, this is Hermas in 90 AD. 90 AD. This is Hermas. He said, Guard your chastity and let no thought enter your heart of another man's wife. That's very serious. Not even a thought in your heart about another man's wife. That that's adultery. Um, if anyone commits his wicked, this wicked deed, he works death for himself. Don't listen to these people that say that, um, that this is not a big deal to God, right? We are going to a marriage a marriage we are betrothed to Jesus Christ we are promised to him he is our our lover of our soul the one who loves us but the one who expects love and obedience and faithfulness in return why would he invite us to come up to heaven for the marriage supper if we're in dirty wedding clothes no yeah, I know it's easier for the women to think of, but we have our wedding dress on. We're just waiting for when we get called up. We're not going to go and wallow with the pigs in the mud like the prodigal son. We're keeping our wedding dress clean. If, if you man, if you, you want to think about it, that you've got your tux on. You're about to go to your wedding. You keep your tux clean. You don't pollute it with thoughts of lust. Lust will send you to hell. Jesus said it. He said, if you lust, it's the same as adultery. Um, you know, so then Justin Martyr in 151, he says, early Christians were told to live holy and pleasing lives in an evil, corrupt society. And Justin was beheaded for this. You know, we haven't been beheaded yet, but boy, are we hated. Those of us who are on the permanence of marriage thing, we are hated, just like John the Baptist just like Jesus said. Um, Justin Martyr also taught, to indulge in lust is to be guilty of adultery of the heart. Whoever marries a divorced person commits adultery. Whoever contracts a second marriage is sinning against God while the former spouse lives. God does not, and the church must not, take into account human law when it is in violation of God's law. 
that's what's going on right now. Human law says, yeah, divorce and remarriage, marry for any cause. Human law says it's okay to have a gay marriage. This is, this is human law, and God is laughing at it. God will not be mocked. He will not be mocked. God judges the motives and intentions, private thought, life, and actions. All is known and exposed to God with which we have to do. And then he says, is this what your church teaches? Is this what you teach and believe? This is what the New Testament church thought. So, if you think this is not a big deal, and you were going to gay marriage ceremonies, or you were performing gay marriage ceremonies, or you were going to remarriage ceremonies, or performing remarriage ceremonies, you're under judgment. I can't, I can't, I can't make this click for you. I've, I've said it over and over again. Because at this point, we are in crunch time. Nothing has changed from the early church to now, except that there are so many false faith believers. It's all over the place. We are supposed to, we are exhorted. This was Clement of Alexandria, 208. We are exhorted to have faith that exudes itself by morals, kindness, and patience. He taught that the thoughts and will of God exhorts, educates, and perfects the true Christians. So, you know what? If you think you're of God and you're growling into the camera and you think that you need to rebuke everyone and do videos about your brethren, rebuke, 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 oh, that's your job, but you have no morals, kindness, and patience, and don't just say, well, I'm a, I'm a man and I've got to do this. No, I know a lot of really godly men who are kind and, and moral and patient. It's the fruit of the Spirit. It is. Um, so Clement of Alexandria wrote that Scripture counsels marriage, however, and never allows any release from the union. It, it is expressly contained in the law you shall not divorce a wife. Whoever takes a divorced woman as wife commits adultery. It says, for if anyone divorces his wife, he debauches her. That is, he compels her to commit adultery. And not only does, th does he that divorces her become the cause of this adultery, but also he takes the woman and gives her the opportunity of sinning. For he did not take her, she would return to her husband. Uh, I know that's like hard English to understand. Um, Ogan wrote, A remarriage is not an actual marriage, but disguised adultery. Basil wrote, "A woman who The woman who lives with him, uh, it's like, The man who has deserted his wife and goes to another is himself an adulterer because he makes her commit adultery. And the woman who lives with him is an adulteress because she has, ca has caused another woman's husband to come over her. The woman who lives with an adulterer is an adulteress the whole time. The woman who has been abandoned by her husband ought, in my judgment, to remain as she is. It, it goes on and on. And this is the reason um, Ambrose of Moshe, do not, Milan, excuse me, do not seek a union with another wife. He said, but the law cannot be abolished. In the case of marriage, there is no sin, but there is law. How many people don't even want to think about the law of God? The law of God is, is to be able to obey Jesus. Not because he's like, ah, you got to do this, pushing his thumb on you and like, no. It's like, no. Oh, God, you saved me and I want to obey you. You're you're the love of my life I you know you I go to bed at night thinking about him I wake up in the middle of the night I'm thinking about him I wake up in the morning I'm thinking about him um, so I don't know if I'll do any more about this but you know this to me when I start to find out if I'm trying to find out friend or foe friend or foe if you're a friend of God a friend of God's word you're my friend but if you are a foe to God's word, if you're going to rebel against God and say, well, no, God really didn't say that, 
or no, 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 there must be grace that covers that, or, um, or no, God can't, can, God can't really mean that he's got control of my sex life. You know, men are particularly bad. They want to compartmentalize, right? They have their God compartment. They're, well, I, I don't, I don't even want to spend any time talking about what they do. It's the lust, it's the lust, it's the lust. It all boils down to lust. It all boils down to idolatry, that they believe that Jesus is not who he says he is. Um, so, it turned out yesterday, um, yesterday I went to go to the um, drug and alcohol rehab place. Now, I had awakened in the morning with, um, I've been, I've been kind of in the Sermon on the Mount. I haven't watched it yet, but Michaela Cooper did a video about about the Sermon on the Mount. But, you know, um, I've been persecuted. I've had some people do some videos about me being, uh, I don't even want to say, but basically, you know, if men, I am not in a church. And men, if you want to tell me to shut up and that I need my places to be quiet, then shame on you. Shame on you. Because men and women will prophesy in Acts 2, 17 and 18. And I have a voice, and God has said, let it roar, Terry, let it roar, because the godly are as bold as lions, and I have no spirit of fear. I have a spirit that is uh, of love, joy, love, boldness, and a sound mind. I have a sound mind because God healed me of my PTSD, and I tell everybody about it, and I acknowledge him in all my ways. That's my job. My job, which is a privilege, is to acknowledge him in all my ways. So, I was thinking about Matthew 5. Read it for yourself. Read it for yourself. Matthew 5. When we go out to share the gospel. Oh, I started to jump ahead. When we, when we go out to share the gospel, we are sharing the Sermon on the Mount. Okay? And we must do this. This is what our calling is our calling is to tell people if you're truly saved your calling is to tell others um oh goodness i think her name is octavia christ follower she just did a video about a man that died that she had tried to share the gospel with and you know she's a really cool woman because she got saved out of catholicism and then her husband got saved he got baptized recently that is so rare for the woman to get saved first in a marriage and then the husband to get very very rare it's, it's more common if the husband gets saved for the wife to get saved anyway um back to that sunday so i talked to her and then i went i was like hmm, i'm gonna go home and no no i'm not going home i'm going to mo's and you know you just never know if you make yourself available if you are like here i am send me god he sets up the appointments and you know what? When you're sharing the gospel, they're either going to hate you and get really mad or you're going to be shocked when somebody actually does receive it. So there was a young man, 18 years old, working at Moe's. And I, the last time I had been there, uh, I had uh, talked to two believers. And so I started talking to him and he was very receptive. But the funny thing was, the other guy was the guy that I talked to the last time. So when I saw him, I said, hey, do you remember me? He goes, well, of course I remember you. I think he's 20 or something. I said, did you listen to what I told you? Because you said you weren't really reading your Bible. He pulls out his little Bible out of his pocket. It just touched my heart. It touched my heart that someone had actually listened to me and taken it and heeded the advice. He's like, I'm back to reading my Bible every day. And there he is able to talk to this man. So this young man, I'm telling him, I, and I have to go through it. Y'all, if you will not talk about sexual morality with somebody, you are not going to be able to share the gospel. You must do it. Even, even Ray Comfort is starting to talk about it more. And Ray Comfort got saved off of that verse. Ray Comfort got saved off of the verse that said, If you look at a woman with lust, imagining having sex with her, that it is the same as adultery and you should gouge your eye out and cut your hand off that's what ray comfort did that's how he got saved and he is you know he's 69 and that is what he's talking about 
So anyway, you know, I go through the gospel the way that I always do. You know, are you a liar? Are you an idolater? Making up a different Jesus than the Jesus of the Bible. One that you feel comfortable with who isn't going to tell you that you're a bad person. That you're not living according to his commands. Um, you know, basically that same thing I have to talk about. You know, to a young man, i got to talk about, are you looking at porn? Are you doing it? Are you, you know, are, are you doing that? And, uh, but a lot of times they get really upset with me, but this guy didn't. In fact, he came around the, around from behind the counter and he gave me a hug and I asked if I could pray for him. He, he was so cute. He gave me this big hug and I was like, can I pray for you? And he's like, oh yeah, let's pray. I was like, okay. And I put my hand on him and I, I kind of put a little space and I put my hand on him and I prayed for him. His name is Mario. And uh, I, I really do, I do pray. And then I went over to the other guy. He was over by the drinks by this point. And I was like, listen, I just gave him a Bible, a Save Yourself Some Pain um, booklet, and uh, Are You an Atheist gospel track. I said, now you've got some watering to do. But I came home just so encouraged because if one more person gets into the rapture because of, uh, of what I've said, that is really awesome. So I was really pumped up. Okay, so yesterday I go to the recovery place for drug and alcohol and I've got Lexi and I haven't been there in two months. There, I end up seeing about 60 different patients, I would imagine, about 60. Not, not that I get to talk to all of them, no. But it's funny because one guy walks in and I remembered him and he came right up and he's like, hey, how are you? I was like, how are you? And I couldn't really, I mean, I remembered him. But the thing is, I can see the light of Jesus in people's eyes. Excuse me, I need to go back to the scripture because I read this before I went to this thing. Um, God blesses, this is uh, the Sermon on the Mount. Read the whole thing. But Matthew 5, 6. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice. We're supposed to care for justice. We're supposed to care about how children are being treated, about how widows are being treated, about the elderly, about the least of these, about women who are trying to be uh, doing the Lord's work and the men are putting them down. We're supposed to be caring about that. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. The purity of the bride, for her to see God. You must be pure. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. It's also, God blesses those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. I'm living a righteous life, and I, I'm not boasting in it. I'm just telling you, if you're not living a righteous life, you're not truly belonging to the kingdom. There's no if, ands, and buts. That's what it is. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things about you because you are my followers, not just lip service, but truly following. Be happy about it. Be very glad for great rewards await you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. It goes on to talk about the salt. It goes on to talk about the law. If you ignore the, um, I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, that's at the end, at the very end, um, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose has achieved. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them, he will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of the religious law, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have to be disciplined. You have to love obeying God. You know, trust and obey for there's no other way. Um, 
so I walked in and he came up to me and he was like, hello. And he said, are these, he said, are these earrings amethyst? And I said, no, they're, you know, they're just fake, but yeah, they're purple. I said, that's kind of funny because this week I looked up the word amethyst and it's just in the Bible one time. And he says, I know it's Revelation 19. And I'm thinking, oh, I, what I've been thinking lately is I've got a live one here. You know, like if you're fishing, if you're fishing and, oh, I got a, I got a nibble, I got a nibble, but it's like, oh, I've hooked a live one. I've hooked a live one. I love to fish. I'm going to be doing some of that in heaven. Like, I've got a live one here. They are spiritually alive. They're not dead. And I could see it in his eyes. And he's like, yeah, it's Revelation 19. I was like, you know your Bible? Oh, yeah, I read my Bible every day. And I said, well, um, yeah, it's in heaven. He goes, of course it's in heaven. He said, it's one of the 12 foundation stones. I mean, I'm seriously, how many of y'all say that you read your Bible and you know that? You know, some of y'all maybe do. But I was very surprised. This is a guy in his 20s. So I said, he said, oh, yeah, you know, they've started letting me be a worship leader at this uh, church in Stone Mountain. And I said, so how is that going? He said, well, it's okay. I said, the church is dead, isn't it? He said, yeah, it is. It's dead. And I said, it's because of the music. I mean, it's because of the preaching, but it's also because of the music because they're not using the name of Jesus. He goes, you know what? You're right. He says, we sing all these songs and we don't even use the name of Jesus. And he said, you know what? It, my mother says it. My mother said it. They have a form of godliness, but they're denying the power of his name. I'm like, wow. And he, and then I said, you know, I said, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but I have a YouTube channel. And if you get a chance, you know, check it out. I said, your mother sounds like a wonderful woman. And he said, well, she's passed away. And I said, well, I, I started this channel because I had a, I've, I've had rapture dreams where I've been flying. He says, my mom used to have these rapture dreams, but it wasn't so much flying up to heaven. It was that she would be flying over and, and uh, witnessing and telling people as she flew over them about Jesus. I said, I used to have those before I had the rapture dreams. And he says, you know, the amazing thing is my mother has passed away. So she must have died pretty young because he seemed to be in his 20s. And he says, my mother has passed away and she was blind. She was blind. How grateful are we for our eyes? You know, uh, Ray Comfort always talks about that. Would you gouge out one of your eyes uh, for a million dollars? You know, really, what's your price for your sight? And his mother, this godly woman who had raised him up, and, and in the fear of the Lord, uh, you know, it's funny. I said, I said, you know what? If the rapture happens, pretty much there are going to be very few people living, leaving from Atlanta. But it'd be really cool if you and I just flew up to heaven right now. I just had the most wonderful time with him. His name is Trayvon. Um, I, was, I just had a wonderful time. So then um, today... You know, when you go to a hospital, you're walking into situations that you don't ever know. Lexi and I were there for over two hours. Um, but once again, I mean, I meet, I met, you know, a hunt, over 100 people, probably 200 people today. But there were some live ones there. There was, and I, I, I told them that I was going to put this on the channel. Um, there was a, a woman, a, a mother. And I guess maybe a sister, an aunt, I'm not really sure, of a man who's 54. And they had taken him off of life support. And it was just a matter of time. They didn't know how long it was going to take for him to die. But I could see it in their eyes that they love Jesus. And I said something about it. And they're like, you know what? He knows the Lord. We've been waiting for a very long time. He's been suffering for, I think, five or six years with different uh, major problems and now it's just time for, he loves the Lord and now it's just time for him to go and and you know I said listen I'm not supposed to do this but can we pray because they knew that I was real and I knew that they were real so we prayed for Ricky in the name of Jesus that he um, will pass into Jesus's arms very easily that he won't have to suffer anymore he has suffered for years and I was just so blessed um, and that's just one. I, when I first walked into the hospital, one of the guys that I saw um, two weeks ago, the guy whose uh, father was was in Pearl Harbor, 
he was there when I first walked in the door and I got to meet his wife and I mean I remembered him these people they touch my heart they touch my heart I love these people and are they looking for the rapture no but by the character they have and their love for Jesus I believe that they will be flying with me not that they know not that they have the gift of prophecy to hear what is about to happen but they will fly in the rapture and I hate to say it, there are going to be a whole lot of people on YouTube who were rapture watchers who aren't going to make it because they don't believe that you've got to live a pure and blameless life and that you don't have to represent Jesus and that you can have this cheap grace and easy believism and still go to the wedding. And it's not true. It's not true. So um, please read. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I want to, I ended up writing, last Friday, I ended up writing a bunch of different lyrics to the song that I was singing. I'm going to try it. I I don't know. Uh, I really would, in a way, I would like for you to like take each of the grouping of verses, the stanza is what you would call it musically, and really say, does this match my life? Because these words are biblical. They're about the rapture. They're about gospel. They're about life change. Not life enhancement. Not your best life now, but about life transformation. And, you know, the Holy Spirit wrote these words. I'm not taking the credit for them. Um, let me put them up. Let's see. Okay, you see there? I'm going to just, if you just want to pause it so that you'll be able to sing along. And you see, as I'm writing it, there's very few corrections. It's like the Holy Spirit is just writing it down. And we know that the Holy Spirit inspired, I'm not saying this is the Bible, I'm not, but the Holy Spirit inspired the Bible to be written. Same thing, right? The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had men use their pens to write down what God wanted to say. And then, um, and then that's the last. Okay, and this is, these are the lyrics to the David Phelps song. Okay, I ended up writing them all down because I, I was just blown away that I'm singing this song and that it's 444 in the morning. Um, <laughs> and I'm wide awake. Okay, so let's see if I can do this. And you know, it's not about entertainment. It really isn't. It's that I feel like a song leader. I've been given a gift I've been given a gift that I want to use for the glory of God. And I've been given a gift that I do know his voice. And he does speak to me. And I wrote these these uh, lyrics down. And I want the same for you. I want the same for you. I want you to be able to love on others. Uh, to love God and to love other people. Whatever your spiritual gift is, to be able to love other people. Because we know, we know that it's going to be disastrous after we leave in fact on the way when I got down to the hospital with the 6222 tag next to me when I came back um, there was a tag that said um, shaker shaker shaken 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 well this world is going to be shaken and there's going to be a whole lot of Christians that are going to be left behind and they're going to be shaken they're going to be shaken thinking that they had the faith that God accepts when they never really knew him. They never really knew him. Uh, only those who obey the will of my Father will enter heaven. And many, many were going to say, well, boy, I was looking for that rapture. And he's going to say, go away. I never knew you. You who continued in lawlessness. That's what the Bible says. You can ignore the law. You can ignore God's commands. But that doesn't mean that God's ignoring them. You're just, you're just being foolish. You're being foolish if you're going to ignore God's commands. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Oh, my soul, lift up your eyes. The Son of Man has been glorified. Oh, my soul, lift up and know the promise of salvation. Jesus has been lifted high, and he's coming again. He 
he's coming again. Jesus has been lifted high. It's about to begin, about to begin. Oh, my soul is mighty hand to take us from this polluted land. The bride removed, his judgment comes, there will be no more delay. Oh, my soul, look up and see the Lamb of God, only one worthy. Oh, my soul, his perfect blood, Father, Son, and Holy Dove. Oh, my soul, the dead will rise, caught up in the heavenly skies. The trumpet call, his voice is nigh. Holy Spirit, take us to him. Oh, my soul, with eyes to see, his grace has made my heart believe sovereign to before all time, ever knowing and all present. Jesus has been lifted high, wanting all to believe, surrender and leave. Jesus has been lifted high, broken over. Before all time, this was the plan. Jesus would die to save all men. Trust and believe and turn from sin. Praise the God of great salvation. Oh, my soul changed radically. Christ is dwelling inside of me lord and king i must proclaim all glory to his name jesus must be lifted high he's faithful and true he makes all things new jesus must be lifted high no beginning no end my heart he does soul lift up and go blessed hope only few will know holy and pure and chaste and clean thank you god it's not a dream jesus will be lifted high given eyes to see thank you god for me Chosen before even time began, saved from eternal hell, I must go and tell. That's my story. That's my testimony. He has saved my life. I live for him. I acknowledge him in all my ways, and he will make my path straight. He is faithful, he is good, he is loving, he is just, he is kind, he is merciful. He is God, Jesus, God in the flesh, who reigns. Yeah, Trayvon said, he said, my Jesus is the Jesus of Revelation 19. He has a double-edged sword coming out of his mouth. He rides on a white horse. On his thigh is written faithful and true. I had written those lyrics on Friday before I met him on Wednesday. Keep your eyes looking up. Jesus is coming. Don't be disappointed. He is coming. Stay straight. Stay on the narrow road. The broad road leads to destruction. I love you. And I pray for you. Oh, one more thing. God showed me a video, uh, the video where I had like this angel orb next to me about the old faithful people. And I did spend the day, 
I didn't watch the video, but I did spend a, a good part of the day praying for um, the people who put in comments there. And please pray for Daniel and Summer. Um, they've gotten a divorce. They have three young children. You know, that's the thing about us women. Uh, we can't stand to see families destroyed. We can't stand to see our children's marriages fail, right? We don't want our children's marriages to fail. We hate to see um, the grandchildren having to go through this. Um, so that was one of the blessings was that I saw her from three months ago and it just was a recommitment to my on my part to pray for them. There are a lot of prayer needs and I, I would love for prayer for support. If you ever just feel like going into one of my old videos and just going through and praying for the people in the comments there, I, I welcome that. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, this is a ministry and there are a lot of hurting people. To whom much is given, much is required. If your spiritual gift is praying, I've just given you an opportunity to pray for my viewers, and I would appreciate that. All right. I love you. Take care. See you soon, hopefully, in 